Section 10, Business Valuation. Business Appraisals. Market value is not always the same as book value of a company. Certain accounting practices distort valuation. Business appraisers use ratio analysis. Person who appraises businesses must have a real estate license or be a certified appraiser. Business appraisers need specialized training. Major reasons for business appraisal include sale or purchase, merger or acquisition, divorce, estate taxes, or insurable value. Adjusting the accounting records. Estimates are necessary. Assets are reported at cost, not market value. Fully depreciated buildings may still have value. Assets or liabilities may be missing. Is it a cash or accrual basis accounting? Inventory cost methods may differ. To analyze financial statements, you need to construct historical series of statements, calculate financial ratios over time, investigate unusual items and results, increases in miscellaneous income, unusual receivables, and slow inventory turnover ratio. Preparing statements for valuation purposes. Adjusted balance sheet removes items that don't add value. Market balance sheet items stated at market value rather than cost. Adjust the income statement. That's going to remove items that will distort comparisons with other similar companies. And then the pro forma income statement is the best estimate of net income for the next year or two. Business appraisal definitions. Supported defended estimate of the value of a business. Going concern value, the business is likely to continue operations. Liquidation value is the business is not likely to continue operations. The business appraisal process is to find the assignment, estimate the date of appraisal, collect data, analyze the data, prepare the estimate of value, prepare the appraisal report. Inventory costing methods are first in, first out, last in, first out, and average. On this slide is financial ratios. If you look at the chart, you can see that the formula to determine each ratio. You've got your current ratio, quick ratio, inventory turnover ratio, debt to worth ratio, and net profit to owner capital ratio. Business appraisal approaches to value include sales comparison, cost depreciation, income capitalization, and liquidated value. Section 11, Agency Relationships in Florida. When people delegate authority to another to act on their behalf, an agency relationship is created. And there's two types of law. You have common law and statutory law. Florida law prohibits a broker from creating a fiduciary relationship with the buyer and the seller together. Dual agent is defined as a broker who represents as a fiduciary to both the buyer and the seller in a real estate transaction. Fiduciary is defined as a relationship of trust and confidence between the broker as the agent and the principal. Disclosure requirements do not apply to non-residential transactions. Renting or leasing unless there's an option to purchase a property with four or fewer residential units. Auctions, appraisals, and business opportunities. Under Florida law, it's presumed that licensees are operating as transaction brokers unless a single agent or no brokerage relationship is established. 
Licensees are not required to give the written transaction broker notice. Exceptions to the disclosure requirements are that the licensee knows that a single agent or transaction broker represents the buyer or the seller, a bona fide open house or model showing, unanticipated casual encounters, responding to general questions of advertised properties, communications concerning services offered, and when selling new residential units built by the owner. No brokerage relationships. A seller or a buyer can choose not to be represented. The broker facilitates the sale or purchase. Law does not require buyers or sellers to be represented. Record keeping requirements. Brokers must retain brokerage relationship disclosure documents for five years. All residential transactions that result in a written contract all non-residential transactions that utilize designated sales associates. And this includes files of property that fail to close. The timing of the broker disclosure. Non-representation, the no brokerage relationship notice must be disclosed in writing before showing a property. And the single agent disclosure before or at the time of entering into a listing agreement or an agreement for representation or before showing of property, whichever occurs first. You will recall from your pre-licensing course that residential transactions, residential sales are defined as sale of improved residential property of four or fewer units, unimproved residential property intended for four or fewer units, or agricultural property, 10 acres or less. There are three brokerage relationships available in Florida. Transaction broker, where you can work for the buyer or the seller or both. Single agent, where you work for the buyer or the seller, not both. And then the no brokerage relationship. A single agent is defined as a broker who represents as a fiduciary either the buyer or the seller, but not both in the same transaction. Principal is the party with whom a licensee has entered into a single agent relationship. In an agency relationship, the broker owes fiduciary duties to the principal. The duties for a no brokerage relationship can be remembered by the acronym ADD, A -D -D, account for all funds, disclose all known material facts that affect the value of residential property that are not readily observable to the buyer, and deal honestly and fairly. A subagent is authorized to assist and represent the agents. Duties are delegated by the original agent. Broker sales associates are general agents of the broker and sub-agents of the broker's principal. The broker is an agent of the principal and sales associates owe the same fiduciary obligations to the principal as does the brokers and sales associates cannot have a different relationship than their broker. Single agent duties account for all funds, disclose all known facts that materially affect the value of residential property that are not readily observable, deal honestly and fairly, confidentiality, obedience, loyalty, full disclosure, use skill, care, and diligence, and present all offers and counteroffers in a timely manner. In the transaction broker relationship, that is limited representation to the customer, either the buyer, the seller, or both. It does not mean that you're gonna represent the buyer or the seller as a fiduciary or as a single agent. And the customer is not responsible for the acts of the licensee. 
In a transaction broker relationship, the parties give up the rights to undivided loyalty. Limited representation allows the licensee to assist both the buyer and the seller. The licensee cannot represent one party to the detriment of another. And they're not required to give customers a written transaction broker notice, but still have the duties. Transitioning to another relationship. The broker may change the relationship with the customer or principal. To transition from a single agent to a transaction broker, the principal must sign the consent to transition to transaction broker notice. Duties of a transaction broker, account for all funds, disclose material defects, deal honestly and fairly, use skill, care, and diligence, present all offers and counteroffers in a timely manner, exercise limited confidentiality unless waived in writing by a party, and a duties that are mutually agreed to. Terminating a brokerage relationship can happen when fulfillment of the brokerage relationship purpose, mutual agreement to terminate, expiration, broker renounces by giving notice, principal revolts relationship by giving notice, death of the broker, destruction of the property or eminent domain, and bankruptcy of the principal or customer. Designated Sales Associates At the request of the buyer and the seller, the broker may designate sales associates to act as single agents for different customers in the same transaction. This is for non-residential transaction only, Buyer and seller must have assets of at least $1 million, and sales associates must give respective principals the single agent notice and designated sales associates notice. A broker must have an employment contract, written or oral, to be compensated, known as a listing agreement. The listing agreement is an employment contract. Under Florida law, a written listing agreement must have a definite expiration date, cannot have an automatic renewal provision, and a copy must be given to the seller within 24 hours. Keep in mind, oral agreements for listings are legal. This concludes Day 3.